Hi, this is Pastor Rick. Glad you joined me. I'm still working on my way through a spiritual journal, and I want to talk about uh, scripture memory. Um, there is a verse in the Bible, Psalm 119, verse 11, which it says, uh, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, what it says is when you take a passage of scripture, and I used to take a little three by five card and I'd write the address of the scripture on one side, and then I would write out the scripture on the back side. It, it was a method that really helped me to remember that passage of scripture. Now I didn't write the whole Bible on cards. I just picked verses as I was going through my daily quiet time. When I would see a verse and I said, wow, that really is talking to me, I would write it down on my card and memorize it. And you know what? That helps me privately to have scriptures in my head so when I'm going through a tough time, the scripture comes back and reminds me of promises of God, for example, or warnings, things to avoid. Also, I find a lot of times if I want to witness to someone, it's very helpful for me to have scriptures memorized that I'm able to share with someone from memory, and they know that's coming from my heart not just reading it out of a little book, uh, but actually sharing things that are meaningful to me and that i found to be true in my life. So scripture memory is an important thing to do. And then the, the second thing is how to pray. And um, there is uh, several ways that people have tried to remember important elements of prayer. I'm going to give you one, which is ACTS, A-C-T-S. A is for adoration. It means remember to start your prayer every day by just praising God for who He is. Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And there's no better way for you to begin a time of prayer than for you to adore God, to worship Him, to bless Him, to praise Him, to thank Him for who He is. So that's uh, adoration. The second thing that I would encourage you to do in your life is to confess sin. Confessing sin uh, just means that you're agreeing with God. Conf confessare, con confession means to say with. It means I agree with God what he already knows. I'm a sinner. So 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you worship God, adoration, and see, confess your sins to God, God will forgive you and cleanse you. And the third one is to give God thanks. There's a lot of things in your life and mine for which we can give God thanks. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Well, you might want to call me on that and say, now, wait a minute. There's some things happening in my life I don't want to give God thanks for. Uh, actually, as you grow in maturity, you begin to realize if, because God loves you, everything he allows in your life can be used together for good in your life to strengthen you, to make you wiser, and to uh, make you grow. I mean, think about it. If your whole life was easy, and you got everything you wanted to do without working for it, you would get to be a big slob spiritually. You'd be lazy, you'd be weak, and if any kind of real problem ever came up, you wouldn't know how to deal with it. But when you've been through troubles in your life, and you've had to work your way through it praying and asking God to help you, and then God sends others to help you, you become much stronger than a person whose life was just plain easy and everything's handed to him. So God gives you a reason to give him thanks even when you go through a hard time because he's making you stronger for tomorrow. Okay? Be back next week. I have another word for you.